so excited to have this opportunity to meet and speak with Dharma Mitra. Dharma, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. You are welcome. And for me, it is, it is an honor to share the way. <laughs> thank you, Dharma. I, I remember a chance I had to practice with you when you were visiting in Fort Lauderdale, Florida at a yoga journal conference. And I had an amazing experience. I really enjoyed practice with practicing with you. And I've had the opportunity to practice and meet a lot of your students and teachers over the years. So it is a real honor to have a chance to ask you some questions about yoga and your yoga journey. Thank you so much. Uh, one question I'm curious is, can you tell me what your first experience with yoga was, if you can remember like how you felt and, and what type of experience you had when you first came in contact with yoga practice? This was amazing. <laughs> I met my guru. I had a younger brother who had to make the translation. And then I was amazing with the teaching, and I was instructed already in a beautiful vegan diet, <laughs> because yeah. at that time I was really in bad shape, very sick. So also I received instructions about what the life is, what means to have a guru of this. Anyway, my first experience was already changing my life completely. The way I eat, the way I see things. <laughs> and that was just in the first lecture. A wow. little bit of compassion, uh, learning about what we really are, and the steps to get healthy. And the foundation was ahimsa, compassion, right? And also to be obedient to the teacher. Anyway, that was my start in life. It was a new life. It looked like everything opens. Yes. Do you feel that having met him and or having a guru is of utmost importance in a yoga practice? I think if it wasn't my guru, I would be in terrible trouble today. <laughs> Maybe I was not even alive, depressed. <laughs> and, you know, we, if we don't have anything ahead of us, it's a terrible pain and suffering. So my first guru was my mommy and daddy here uh -huh. in the physical world. When I met my guru, he was, I was born again in the spiritual world, divine knowledge. And it was the beginning of happiness. If, if the, how to say, the teacher is very important. So I was born already in the spiritual world. I have a spiritual name, a spiritual mantra, and a spiritual father. Yes, yes. <laughs> did, did your, at that time, did you start learning yoga asana with your teacher or did that come a little bit later? I was, before I met my guru, I was a professional bodybuilder. I was also a wrestler. I, I played with judo. Then I was in the Air Force for six years. My profession was a sport. I have all the conditions, flexibility, strength, power. But when I met my guru, I was sick for a while, but I had the foundation. So my body was fit for the postures. I could do almost everything. And then I concentrate on knowledge because only the knowledge will bring, remove pain and suffering. 
but I concentrate more on the postures. The guru said, you have to follow your tendency. If your body is fit for postures, do postures. They will bring you good health and some mental powers. Then he said to me, if you are fit for singing, devotion, go ahead, my son. But anyway, the postures are amazingly important. Inverted poses. Yes. Do my conditions, I could achieve good health in one year, restore everything back, thanks to the postures and the breathing. <laughs> yes. Do your poster that you made is remarkable. I love your book, The 608 Yoga Poses. I often will show students your book to highlight that there's such a, your physical ability with the postures was just phenomenal. And personally, uh, I love the physical posture aspect of yoga, but recently due to an injury, I have had to change my approach. And I'm curious if you feel that the physical postures of yoga have any bearing on ability to improve spiritual development. Well, we have to be very cautious. We have to have a good teacher, not to allow you to do some of the fancy poses, because I myself injured my neck. I was doing some kind of a locust, where you lie on your chin and bring the feet to the head. I went too far, and then I heard a noise back in my neck. I think a bone cracked there. And even today, I cannot go into the plow because this injury, I also injury my knees, pushing too much. So I, after lo lots of injuries, you have to be careful because sometimes I was doing by myself and sometimes your guru tell you, but you don't listen for somebody. <laughs> you want to be... In the like this faster, and then you end up in big trouble. <laughs> but the injuries teaches something. Be careful. Go on the right. I say, don't turn your joint in the wrong direction. You know, be very careful. If you come here to my class today, I don't teach any of those fancy poses that has no purpose. It's like a, for alcohol, people, and then you are subject to injuries. So this, the poses, the most important poses are single poses that require no flexibility. But if you're born with body flexible, you're young, okay, do. But be careful, you may injure yourself. Great point, Dharma. Thank you so much. Do you feel that Hatha Yoga can be a form of prayer? Of course, it depends on your intentions. Every action we do, it can be a prayer. It depends on your mental intention. Oh, my Lord, may all beings... <laughs> May I be in all beings, may all beings share this joy through my poses. And whatever I am doing it, my Lord, I may not expect anything just to get healthy so that the mind get good concentration to find you, my Lord. Everything is for you for only one purpose, to get healthy so that the mind can concentrate on spiritual good things. Yes. So become a prayer without sufficient because you're not doing it expecting anything. Just it's for you, my Lord. So the instrument get better. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Can you, when I, when I met you in Fort Lauderdale, you, you spoke a lot about the Bhagavad Gita. I'm curious if you can share with us or with me and our listeners, uh, some of the more important lesson or lessons that you have 
glean from reading the Bhagavad Gita throughout your life? Bhagavad Gita, oh my goodness. My goodness, I have a small one for my packet, a little one without the comments, and then I have a big one at home with the comments. It's amazing because there you learn how the universe is here, how long is here, is it eternal, or is it not eternal? It'll, you learn also about the laws of karma. It's amazing, the laws of karma, right? And then you learn, let's say, if you die tonight, where are you going? What's going to happen? And then you learn also about how the creation, the purpose of creation. You learn about the cycles. The cycles, I mean, is maybe it's concerned about one big bang. And the beauty is some of the verse. Lord Krishna said, we, you never born, we never born, we never die. We always been here. The universe is endless. Also, we learn about what the meaning of life. We have to experience all forms of creation. All forms of creation. So the forms, according to the Bhagavad Gita, is endless, infinite. So after self-realization, the end of all pain and suffering, is the beginning of experience of the forms that's beyond this level now. Subtle forms that keep going on eternally. It is endless. So this knowledge, as you realize gradually, comparing the knowledge with technology today, like today, some astronomers realize with the help of James Webb Telescope, the universe is not a big thing anymore. It's endless in our direction. It makes no sense to have a tiny big bang that lasts 15 billion years and then finish you big empty all the time. It's endless, infinite. And there are, I found also, there are beings who went before us. Infinitely, infinitely in the back. And the mind, in order to experience everything, these beings are so high, we call it the gods. <laughs> yeah. Like us. Yes. And I learn also, don't worry, my son, one day you're going to be Brahmas and gods too, mm -hmm. very deep into the future. Now I really accept this knowledge. I think that's the way I want. I think it makes sense. Yes, beautiful. I love it. Thank you, Dharma. I, when I, sometimes when I look at the world and oftentimes when I look at it through media, through news, I see a lot of violence. And so I'm curious as yoga practitioners, how can we achieve ahimsa or nonviolence when we see so much violence around us? Okay. I'm going to rephrase this for me. Thank you. Please. There's so much violence around us. Yeah. So much violence. Oh, yeah. What do we do? I love to talk about this one. Remember, we are here for a long time, at least six billion years. There are younger souls. Every second, every moment, infinite of souls are coming to for the first time. Not here in this blue planet, <laughs> on the others. <laughs> so infinite. Just here, every one of us are in different age. There are younger souls that you see out there, criminals, violence, they are greedy, they act with demonic nature. Because they are younger, so there is nothing wrong with that. 
by having class here, you can see all different levels of soul. Not because someone is lucky, blessed, and then that is not good for the Lord. How come God make his children, one already spiritual, the other one not? So whatever is happening, if I can tell what is happening to me right now, but it doesn't affect me at all, because I know there is a perfect reason due to my karmas and conditions, because everything is following natural laws of evolution, spiritual evolution, movement, mass force. But everything, we're encountering every time something, not good karmas, painful. But I can dance. I like to face bad karmas. <laughs> I dance with it, and then I realize my own creation from the past. Remember, the Lord is perfect. He's watched everything that is happening, but he's not interfering. <laughs> because it's part of the flow. He could come here the other day, right, and tell people, look, move from there because a big earthquake is coming. Yeah. But he doesn't do it because it's part of the flow. So whatever is passing through us, just if you cannot find the reason, it is in the astral brain, but don't go there. So try to understand is your own fault, is your own creation from the past. If you don't see the karma there, because you may, maybe you volunteer to pass through this in order to help a cause. For example, Jesus didn't have to, didn't have to come here to pass through all this crucifixion, but he volunteered. Because every blue planet, there is a time when people need Jesus to come down. <laughs> yeah. Like about you to, to come down. So everything is just perfect. We have just to dance with it. Do some breathing, pray, ask the Guru to tell what to do. And just, it passes away. It's like the weather, right? The weather now, tomorrow be sunny. Yes. Great point, Dharma. I love hearing that. Sometimes I have a hard time when I see um, when I see someone suffering. I want to somehow help. How do we know when to try to intervene and or just step back and watch and let it unfold? I guess that's one of the challenges I have is knowing when to intervene and when to just step back and watch. Do you have any insight to share there? Okay, this is part of the compassion. Compassion sometimes, watch out from the emotions of compassion. They make us start suffering too. And then there's one more being suffering. It's better to control the emotions and know why and do something about it. Because violence and suffering never ends, is eternal. It may end here in this blue planet, but it can change forever and throughout the creation. And every place has a time when they come to an end. So the best thing is to know that and do something about it. Like I have pets, I keep, oh, if I could, at the same time, I could visualize people being so bad with the pets, I cannot help. I, like an earthquake, so many pets being buried there, so many pets, animals in the slaughterhouse and the labs being tested. What we can do is just pray. My prayer is like this, oh Lord, <laughs> do some <laughs> mantra. Oh Lord, let them understand why they are suffering. Remember, we are at past through that. You see all these animal pass. If you trace ourselves back, 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 before human being back, back, we pass through all this pain and suffering. All this pain and suffering has a divine purpose. 
for spiritual correction, for the cleaning of the mind, for the payment of your karmas from the past. For example, like I have dogs and cats, I almost can see them gone. I see some of them passing through some difficulties now, but I'll do my best to make sure I take them to the vet, don't let them suffer too much. Mm. And sometimes I encourage, put them to sleep. <laughs> yes. Great answer, Dharma. Thank you. You know, you're a huge inspiration to the yoga community. You've been continuing to practice and teach for over 60 years. Oh, my goodness. I think. <laughs> You're surprised. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's it's so inspirational to all of us that are teaching yoga. Like for me to look to you and see that you're practicing and teaching for such a long period of time, that gives me a lot of hope. That gives me a lot of inspiration. And uh, I, my wife and I have a yoga studio and we've had a lot of challenges keeping it running over the years. And part of it is because when I connect to the yoga practice in a way that feels really authentic for me, sometimes in the world of material and or commercialism, it's tricky for me to know how to balance teaching what I know and love and the way the, the business side kind of pushes me toward certain things. I was wondering if you could give me any insight and or inspiration on how to navigate that challenge. That is very easy. I learned my, my guru once came to this country and he went to a hotel here near Central Park. And then one of his disciples, this man, he said, Guru, uh, my guru, you don't have money left to pay the hotel. He said, don't worry about it. And he had a walk on the Central Park. When he returned, he found a fat envelope in his mailbox. <laughs> Somebody... <laughs> <laughs> so from that knowledge, in 1975, I, I stay in the ashram with him from 64 to 75. So I left. I have a very difficulty with the Swami, not the, my guru, but the other Swami, to get two, $200 to go out in the world. I didn't speak English, but I knew how to teach Hatha Yoga. Mm. Couldn't speak. I knew the knowledge, but I could not explain. Anyway, I found some money. I went out, and then I, someone was calling me. Dharma, where are you going with the shopping bag? I said, I don't know. I'm <laughs> going to find a hotel. That at that time, a hundred dollars you can buy a month, and fifty dollars to buy a to get the agency for employment. But he said to me, come to my place, a loft in City Hall. So when I arrived there, nobody knew about yoga. So my class, a dollar fifty. Two hours class, a wow. dollar fifty. Also you have a free poster. <laughs> <laughs> Not at that time, but you have uh, other things. Yes. Free sprouts. Free this, free that. I could not speak English, but I could run only a class. But everybody, for some reason, you show your, your kindness, whatever. Everybody's treated like in a family. If you cannot pay a, a dollar fifty, that's fine, stay. But anyway, in one week, I have a whole class. And then I moved to another place. I, I, I was able to save. $1,300. And then I moved to 14th Street and 6th Avenue. I rent a place there. I spent all my money to put a, a, a velvet carpet on the floor, <laughs> neon signs and no windows, a dollar fifty plus, everybody, nobody knew. But I, the first day, only one person came just to investigate. When I close my eyes to the home, when I open the eye, the person left. 
<laughs> and for some reason, next day, lots of people start coming. And I have a full class in less than a month. Yeah. I only had money hidden under the under the radiator. I have <laughs> nine thousand dollars over here. I never <laughs> had problems because every time I move, no matter what, it has to go. Yeah. Even if I have to change to charge fifty cents. <laughs> but I have never problem. Just be nice to your students. Mm -hmm. Don't be too strict. Because yeah. I cannot extend your expiration day or mm. your at last year students. Yeah. If they get hurt, they're going to sue you too. <laughs> so be yeah. nice to them. If they don't want to pay, that's fine. No, yeah. And then amazing, you don't have to worry about money. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Naturally, be nice, a big family. You know? Yes. I love hearing that, Dharma. That's a, that's it's so simple. It's so simple. That's a beautiful the thing. <laughs> the IRS came after me once. The IRS. Mm. I don't see you reporting anything. I say, well, I don't go on vacation. I always here. <laughs> I don't have car. I don't have car. But he, he said, you still have to report something. Yes. Came to my class, check it out. I was lucky. Nobody came the day they came. <laughs> And then he was laughing to me. He said, oh, anyway, you have to pay $240 for this. The next time, find an account. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Amazing, Dharma. I hear you. Yes, I, I, Even I, now, today, I don't know who is running the yoga center. <laughs> You have Adam here, have someone on there. I don't have to do anything. I like I am like an actor. <laughs> yeah. So you see when people make a movie and there's thousands of people working and the actor don't do anything. But yeah. at the end all the money and credit go to to the actor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you've earned it, Dharma. I mean, you've been at it for so long, so I think you deserve it. One thing more I want to say, when, you know, yoga sharing this knowledge is the highest type of charity. You need to see your brothers and sisters getting healthy and happy. Two days ago, I met, I was with the school in the street, a student ran to me, crying. Oh, I changed my life forever. <laughs> That's so nice, the teacher yeah. to hear that. Yes. Like your son. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree. Dharma, you had, you had made mention that you have pets and you love animals and how much seeing animal suffering is hard to watch. But I'm, I'm also curious how your love for your pets helps you keep your yoga practice going. The pets, I'm going to tell you, the only happiness I have <laughs> my pets. How <laughs> they go home, oh, have the pets. <laughs> Before I came here this morning, I wake up six in the morning making mashed potato, <laughs> mashed potato, olive oil. That's a pinch of salt for the dogs. Also, before I went to bed yesterday, too, I have a special food for the raccoon. Uh -huh. I have a raccoon in Long Island. Yeah. <laughs> but now I have problems with the rats. They are multiplying. Mm. I feel like in a big family. Yeah. The pets bring you happiness yeah. because they are like us. One day I was inside my pet and talked to God. I said, oh God, am I going to be pet all the time? <laughs> <laughs> because I see my pet deep into the future. You'll be like me, doing yoga, going to the next level. Yes. But the pets bring happiness. You know, mm -hmm. don't think that you're a spiritual, you're a stuff with samadhi. It's not like that. I enjoy my vegan food. I enjoy 
science fiction movies. <laughs> you know, I enjoy my pets. I enjoy my segway. I enjoy driving. I enjoy all these things. In order to teach, you have to have all this. I know they are from the senses, but in order to teach, you need some you know, enthusiasm from the senses. Why I am so happy talking to you here. I have a nice vegan pizza today waiting for me. <laughs> 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 Equalizer. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love the vegan pizza, and I, I'm glad you got something to look forward to. For the sure. senses, <laughs> not the senses. Yes, yes. That's important. I have two pets, human pets. <laughs> I have <laughs> a son and a daughter, two human pets. Human pets. <laughs> and here in the yoga center, I have lots of pets every day. <laughs> I love it. And, uh, yeah, yeah should... that's, that's a good <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Well, thank you so much, Dharma, for your service to yoga because it's a huge inspiration. And, you know, I really appreciate you just taking time out of your day and being so um, willing to share and talk with me. I really do appreciate this so much. Is there... Is there any message or anything that you would like to add to the conversation to help us close our conversation together? Be moving all the time, active, move all the time. Remember, postures are not yoga, it's a preparation. <laughs> yes. Yes. Pose is just to give you good health. If your body doesn't fit for pose, you don't like, go to the gym, do Tai Chi, go to uh, do your uh, martial arts, run, swim. But the main pose is uh, to pose, sit in a chair for your meditation, and uh, Shavasana <laughs> to do your here, to do your breathing. So keep moving and remember. Whatever came from the eternal is eternal. We are a portion of God. We are here to stay forever. And also, after enlightenment, it's not the end. It's the end of pain and suffering. But it is the beginning of what? Immense, eternal, divine perception going to the next levels. Yes. Rest your mind on the infinite, like the universe is the infinite. And whatever is out there is amazing. Like next life, when I return, I'll be in space station. <laughs> Maybe you're here now, here trying to interview me again. <laughs> Next time you don't have to worry about Yama yeah. anymore. Yes, yes. <laughs> The people be ethically civilized. Yes. Trying the good things. No need for asanas anymore because people are in good shape walking. Yes. Yes. So keep moving and rest your mind on the infinite because the infinite is the Lord Himself. And if you can concentrate, try. Keep trying because even the gods don't want you to go there. You don't pay attention to them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, I am all beings. I am the selves of all God. That's why we concentrate on Shiva. Shiva represents the self of all the gods. Brahma, the eternal, us. Thank you for your questions <laughs> thank you dharma thank you so much i really appreciate this opportunity and i look forward to having a conversation with you in the future whether it's here and or on the next level so thank you dharma yeah, every year i have new things because new things are being found technology and then we compare them with the scriptures yeah Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
Thank you, Dharma. Thank you so much. Thank you.